the ability to discover humanity in people who've been even trying to destroy you, uh, it doesn't only help them reclaim themselves as human beings, but it helps to reclaim a sense of humanity in the society as a whole. Not to divide the world into uh, categories of, of bigots, fascists, reactionaries, racists, out the enemy, but, but human beings who have to be encouraged to discover the points of humanity inside themselves. I will tell I want to walk in, tell him Sabaonke. Tell I want to walk in, tell him Sabaonke. Tell I want to walk in, tell him Sabaonke. Tell I want to walk in, how about Jelena? Tell I want to walk in, tell him Sabaonke. Oti, Nasingoma, Ikona, Ingoma, I say Africa, Nasingoma, Ikona, Ingoma, I will call Coetu, Nasingoma, Ikona, Ingoma, I say Africa, Nasingoma, Ikona, Tatangiaco, Tatangia, oh, Tata, Tatangia, oh, Tate, Tatalin, Tata, when Tatangia, Eaco, Tatamfan, Ingoma, Tatangiaco. And one can see the enormous tasks that we have uh, when we have democracy in South Africa. Uh, I would say that absolute priority has to be given to uh, providing minimum human rights for, for all South Africans. We have to have some kind of democracy and government in South Africa where the whole nation can be involved in these tasks. Well, naturally, it's 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 very emotional uh, to be back here. Uh, the city, from what I've already seen, is still an apartheid city. It's a divided city. I'm not coming back to Cape Town. I'm coming back to various Cape Towns, and it's very painful. And I wish I was a Cape Townian coming back to my city. And all the time I find I have to choose, even in, in personal things. Where do I stay? Uh, will I be a rebel in white society, which I was before? I don't want to be that anymore. I want to be South African in South Africa. I want to be me in my city. That film was, was done, I think, two or three days after I'd returned to South Africa from exile. I'd been away 24 years. Uh, I came back me, but without the bottom part of my arm, uh, filled with excitement and, and joy. We were coming back and coming back to create a democratic South Africa. At the same time, the shock of seeing how divided Cape Town still was uh, was very real. And it hit me because at the airport I landed and someone said, Albie, where do you want to go? And if I said, I want to go to my mother living in a white area, it identifies me in a certain way. If I want to go to Dallin Farida Omar's house, it identifies me in another way. If I want to go to Bilalani Nguka's house, it's another part of Cape Town. A simple question, where do you want to go, is saying, who are you? Where do you belong? Now I'm much freer, it's much easier for me to enjoy the beauty of Cape Town. People move around in ways that were quite impossible before. Uh, the beaches are desegregated, the, the cinemas, the uh, sports grounds, everything has, has opened up in, 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 in quite wonderful ways. But the legacy of the spatial division, the segregation, the ghettos, uh, the, the racialized townships, 
still lies very he heavily on our city. So uh, it's a qualified answer. I'm much more a Cape Tonian and not I'll be a person of white origin fighting against racism, living in a white area. And yet we've still got a long, 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 long way to go before one can really feel that the city belongs to everybody equally. We have to, this is my feeling, mm. yes. we have to prepare ourselves for freedom. Mm. We've had to survive the blows, the torture, mm. the bombs, the tear gas. Mm. The only way you survive is, is you have mm. to put your head down. Mm. Yeah. But you can't walk into freedom, you can't walk into freedom with our heads down. We have to... You walk to <laughs> Well, that, that was a message I was bringing back with me to South Africa that uh, we'd been so focused in, in the freedom struggle uh, on sticking together and destroying apartheid that the danger was a kind of tunnel vision and now we had to start expressing our own humanity uh, and sometimes the freedom struggle became very dour and, and um, uh, tight and South Africans love to sing, to dance, to move, even when times are very, very hard. And here I was, uh, whitey, who'd learnt in exile to get out of my tight white skin a little bit, to move, to dance, and encouraging people now to think of freedom, not simply as chanting and cheering when we gain power and we stamp on the enemy, not that kind of a freedom, but a freedom in our soul, our spirits, our consciousness, our relationships with each other. And uh, it's a bit paradoxical. <laughs> Here I am speaking to uh, an audience from the bitterly oppressed community, uh, but expressing myself in what I would regard as a very African way. Mm. Well, the people must decide what they want. Mm. The people must decide. If mm. the people want to be racist, it's going to maybe create terrible problems for the country. That's democracy. If the people want to be non-racist, and I think that's been our whole policy since the 50s, but the defiance campaign, the Freedom Charter, we always got tremendous support for that. And I think the people want that because they want peace in this country. And they want to feel that the talents and the energy of everybody is being used. I think the people are sick and tired of race, 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 race. They want people, 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 people. Yeah. Mm. That, that's my feeling. I might be wrong. Well, I wasn't wrong <laughs> in the sense that we got a fabulous constitution. It, it was six years later and it didn't come easily and we had breakdowns, massacres, rolling mass action, a lot of bitterness, but in the end we've got a glorious constitution that's been held up to the world and it's a non-racial, non-sexist constitution that, that's in the foundational principles of the constitution. Uh, and it's wonderful now South Africa becomes a, a lodestar, a, a guiding place, first of all for the importance of principled leadership enabling you to overcome problems that seemed insurmountable. Uh, secondly, no problems are intractable. Problems that human beings make can be solved by human beings. And we perform miracles. In fact, we're good at miracles. What we're not so good at is the ordinary things that other people do elsewhere. We have to learn to do the mundane uh, with the same panache that we performed uh, miracles. One hopes that they will be growing up in a free South Africa. Uh, but there's an enormous amount to be done. The talks are just, just the beginning. Uh, it would be so wonderful if they could just take it for granted. It was at a school for children, very young children, pre-primary I think. And, and those children today are in their mid-twenties. They almost what are called the born free generation, who didn't spend much of their lives under apartheid and uh, they have different demands. And we as the older generation have got to respect that. Uh, I've often said that I hope the young people are as cheeky and irreverent as we were in our days, chafing not only against apartheid but old-fashioned ways of doing things and so on. And it's going to be sometimes a little bit awkward for us because they're going to have the effervescence of, of, of youth, the impatience of youth, that's good. But hopefully not in a purely destructive way, hopefully there can be a dialogue between the generations. 